Welcome back to the Papa Me channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in and sit on down. Today, we're going to be talking about the Super Mario yeah, Brothers go! movie. Oh. Chris Pratt. He's so cool. He can't do a Mario voice. Jack Black was the perfect cast for Bowser. This movie's going to be epic. It is currently 8 in the morning, because last night I went and saw the only tickets that were available were at a 1040 screening of Super Mario Brothers. It was a very empty theater. I think that was too late. The children were asleep by then, and it was only adults in there giggling and being atrocious, but we'll get to that very soon. So I am kind of awake. I'm kind of not. I was going to record last night, but I ended up not doing that, and we are recording now. Thankfully, I wrote down all my thoughts about what happened in the movie, and we are good to go. Super Mario Mario Brothers, which if you ever heard, Nintendo teamed up with the studio that does Minions and they decided to make a Mario movie. People are excited. Yeah, the people they sold out tickets everywhere. This is a highly sought after movie. Everybody's favorite Italian man, Mike the Situation, I mean Mario, has come to the animated big screen. And, uh, you know, people are hyped up for it, which is why I sat down, I plopped in my seat, and I was ready for the big show. And uh, let me tell you, in Today's video is sponsored by Rocket Money. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place. I mean, what do I use Rocket Money for? <laughs> Let me tell you. I like to set budgets for myself because when I buy my yachts and my big buildings, it, it can go a little crazy. So I make sure that I to, to, to monitor the credit while also establishing budgets to make sure that I'm not f***ing myself. And it helps me cancel unwanted subscriptions like Netflix. To save more money and spend less, join the 3.4 million members using Rocket Money. Go to rocketmoney.com slash papameat or by clicking the link in the description to get started for free or unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash papameat to get started for free. Get your money right with Rocket Money. Thank you, Rocket Money, for sponsoring the video and back to the video. Um, and it starts off, every time you go to the movies, it starts off with some nice trailers. And right away, as soon as I started seeing the trailers, I was like, something's wrong. Something is going on that is, uh, is devious. I feel like somebody's tricking me. Starting off with Disney's Elementals. What the fuck happened to Disney? Elementals? Oh, really? I'm fire. I can't be with water. I wonder if they're talking about interracial couples. Could you be more on the fucking nose, dude? Elementals look so bad. It's, it looks like the premise to one of the shorts at the beginning of the movies, doesn't it? Remember that one where it's like the Asian kid and he turns into a dumpling or something like that and his mom like fucks it? Yeah. It's about separation anxiety. The other trailer was Dear God is Me, Margaret. That movie felt just like so generic. This is a girls movie for girls who are getting their periods and Rachel McAdams, who's still very sexy, doesn't want to give her daughter a bra. So then it's just about girls wanting to like no. themselves and look after boys. It didn't really, like, it just felt like a coming of age movie, but this feels like a PSA ad. It doesn't feel like an actual movie. They did a Barbie trailer and Margot Robbie got me nice and hard. And then last but not least, the DreamWorks movie about a Kraken. It looks like the ugliest movie I've ever seen in my life. The design for the the Kraken girl is un, it's, uh, it's actually unbelievable. It was just a, a whiplash of bad trailers. Like I just I didn't have fun watching any of them. That's usually the kind of thing with the Disney movies though too though. You usually go to you see you see a kids movie. I'm not supposed to be hard the whole time watching a kids trailer. But they all felt just terrible, which didn't prime me up. I wasn't I wasn't positively ready for the Mario Brothers movie when I sat there. Alas, the movie did start. And whether I liked it or not, I was in for the long run. So before we get into the main show, spoilers! Because I'm going to talk about probably the whole Lizzie. I'm going to ruin everything for you. If you haven't seen it and you're like, I wish you wouldn't have said that, this is your time to click off. I'd give it a 4 out of 10. That's my general overall rating. I, I, when I went into it, I thought it was going to be a 3 out of 10 but it was a four out of 10. That's not a good score. It was barely over my expectations. Let's dive in. The movie starts off with Bowser's invasion on like a frozen area. And there's a silly little reveal of how menacing Bowser's army is. It's, oh, it's so epic. There's just so many flying Koopas. Yeah, Koopas are the turtle monsters. <laughs> 
In case you don't know some lingo, try to catch up, sweetie. All right. They go outside and then it's silly cute penguins. <laughs> also, this is Illumination. So Illumination Studios is uh, the worst and they will do anything they can to make everything look cute and silly. It's kind of their whole vibe. I mean, minions, that's just, you know, there it is. But the penguins, they throw snowballs at Bowser. Bowser grabs one of them and shoots oh. flames at the castle and finds a star. And that's kind of how we set up the, oh, Bowser has a big, powerful star and he's going to take over the world. That's the kind of the premise. I wouldn't say he's as tyrannical as Hitler, but he does say some very questionable things in this film that I think that that's where they drew their influence from. Transition to a commercial. It's the Super Mario Brothers plumbing commercial. How silly. And they're doing their classic voices. And Chris Pratt, give him some slack. It doesn't sound bad. It's me. He does the Mario voice there. I think it sounds very believable. And Mario and Luigi are sitting in a diner watching their commercial. They just got done quitting their jobs, put all their life savings into this commercial so they can start their own business, own plumbing business. And they're very excited. They have a very, I'm just going to put it on the table right now because I just, I felt weird about this, but they have a very like incestuous relationship. And I don't like to, I don't like to put, put that out there. You know, it's not the, something that I like to report on, but uh, it felt like they were fucking the whole movie. I wouldn't be surprised if Mario's mom walks in and sees like Luigi beating off Mario because they live at home. We'll get to that in a sec. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's just a very odd incestuous kind of feeling I get between the two of them. They're very brotherly if you catch my drift. At the at the pizzeria that they're at, because they're Italian, because Italians don't like anything besides pizza and the spaghetti. I'm an, Ita I'm an Italian man. My favorite show is The Soprano, The Godfather. I have a hairy knuckles. I'm an eight-year-old Italian girl and I have a hairy knuckles. In the pizzeria, Mario and Luigi are talking and their old boss, Viper. Is Viper a character in the series or is it just a made-up guy? It's made up guy. Okay. Oh, is it Spike? Whatever, Spike viper he's the bad guy he's the cool guy that's like you guys suck i can't believe that you guys left my plumbing company to start your own you realize that you guys are fucking losers right and everybody knows that you guys kiss and jack each other off and this is the part where you're like oh people don't respect them they're fighting for their their, their respect their lives here luckily though while they're talking to spike they get their first call their first big hit in brooklyn new york and they go to uh fix a, a leaky pipe they go to a fucking genderfied neighborhood i was pissed off poor Puerto Rican children crying in the streets as these white people live in this fucking art museum in Brooklyn. They go inside to fix this leaky pipe and there's a silly moment with the the how the dog. And Illumination can only do one dog design and it's that dog again. So you're probably like, haven't I seen that dog before? And Illumination is just like, this is our staple dog design. Um, you know, they, they fix the pipe, but of course, because Luigi stepped on the dog's bone, the dog has a bone to pick with them. You like that? The dog fucks up the city makes it look like they didn't do a good job and now they are shit out of luck. They, when are the Mario Brothers gonna catch a break? This is a weird part in the movie because they kind of do a callback to Nutty Professor where Eddie Murphy plays every family member at this family dinner and they, they make a blackface joke. There's a big Mario family dinner and the Mario Brothers are sitting there and they're all making fun of him and one of the Mario Brother guys takes out a cigar and he, he huffs it down really quick but he does <coughs> And it, the smoke covers his face and it's black. He wipes his mouth like that and it just looks like he has big cartoon, like racist lips. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he said, you jive turkeys, there's no way you guys are going to actually be able to survive out there as local independent plumbers. And it just felt very tone deaf to me because I was like, that feels oddly racist, Mario movie. That's kind of weird. Especially the use of jive turkey. <laughs> which I'm pretty sure I thought was only for, I thought that was a racist term for like white people. I'm under the camp that you can't be racist towards white people. Harry, what do you think about that? I have two POCs here and one of them says that's true and the other says that it isn't true. Okay, well. But yeah, they have that weird racist moment. They go around, they do the bickering thing and Mario's fed up. He says, you know what? Fuck you guys, I'm going to bed. Which it's, I, I thought, I, how old is Mario supposed to be in this movie? He goes in and he lives in a room. It looks like an eight year old's room. He goes in there, then Luigi comes in with a plate of spaghetti. Oh yeah, also almost forgot in the scene. Mario doesn't like the taste of mushrooms. <laughs> Oh, he's gonna ha he's gonna have a <laughs> gonna be hard pill for him to swallow later on in the movie, I bet. Especially with uh, the Mushroom Kingdom. Anyways, Luigi comes in and he basically comforts Mario. His family's a dick. His family's saying, "Oh, Mario, you're bringing Luigi down with you with your guys' stupid plumbing design. You guys are idiots. Mario, you should kill yourself. You should actually take a rope, tie it, throw it in your closet, and fucking ha! yourself. That's kind of what happens. But yeah, then he does try it." <laughs> 
Mario's sitting there and he's tying an albatross in his room, throwing it over. And it's kind of weird because they're having this conversation with Mario. He's like throwing the rope over the coat hanger in his closet. And talking. He's talking to Luigi, who's just like, Don't worry, Mario. You're not bringing me down with you. I brought you a plate of spaghetti. That's actually partially true. Luckily, Mario on the TV sees a big, big break because Brooklyn is flooding. And this is his time to save Brooklyn. It's time to prove to his family, his mom, his dad, the guy who did blackface in his kitchen. And also his boss, Spike, he has more to give in this life than just being a goddamn burden. So he says, come on, Luigi, we're going to save Brooklyn. And they run down because Brooklyn's flooding and they're going to go fix the pipes down there. They were unable to fix a drip at a genderfied apartment, but they are going to stop a citywide flood. That makes sense. They have the tools to do that. Pops off the top to a manhole, hops down. Luigi's like, Mario, are you sure about these? And Mario just kind of jumps down. They do some side level stuff. You see in the movie, they try to do some callbacks to the platforming side of things. It's kind of fun visually, but you know, they go over, he, there's a pressure valve that Mario has to turn off, but the, the pipe breaks and they're thrown through a wall. This is kind of odd because it, it's like, it, I just didn't understand it. They th get thrown through a wall and it looks like the exact same sewer that's above them, but they just look down and they're like, what is this place? What the hell is this place, Mario? And he's like, wow, nobody's been a down here for years. And there's like some cobwebs and then amongst all these pipes, there's one giant green pipe. It's just, it's just kind of there. I just thought that, okay. They get sucked into this green pipe and Mario and Luigi are thrown through into this new galaxy dimension where they're being transported to another green pipe. But along the way, they get split up. So now we have our motive. Mario needs to prove something to himself, but he needs to save his brother Luigi. And he has to do that. And then Mario gets sent to the Mushroom Kingdom and he meets a silly toad, which toad is, uh, he's our minions. Like the toads are the minions of this movie. You know, they're, they're supposed to be the very cute, silly kind of things. But they gave Toad a very gruff Armenian accent the whole time, and he only makes Uber and Lyft jokes the entire time. I thought that was, I thought that was kind of inappropriate. He just kept being like, kid, I dropped this other guy off in the Mushroom Kingdom, and I only got $14. What the hell's up with that? There's periods in this movie where they're just wanting to just show off visual stuff, and they will just throw in a uh, top-of-the-charts song every once in a while. It starts off with No Sleep from Brooklyn, Beastie Boys, and uh, it only gets progressively more obvious and more meme like it's almost it's borderline it almost feels ironic some of the songs they choose so the armenian toad and mario head off to the mushroom kingdom because they need to go talk to peach because mario needs to help his brother but we cut back to luigi and luigi's in a spooky lava place that's run by bowser he runs up through a spooky forest we get some evil skeleton koopas remember those in the game when you hit them and they come back to life they just don't die what the hell's up with that and they go and they go into the castle the shy guys are there and Luigi, what's gonna happen to him? Who knows? We come back to Mario and we go to Mushroom Kingdom. There's just tons of, you know, toads. We get some funny little back and forth here and there. Look at how they live. They're all freaks. Look at these little freaks and fucking little insects compared to our beautiful, nice, tiny, oh. tiny little t oh, oh, oh. peach, our, our leader. And you know, this is part of the things where you see Mario's having to learn and adapt to what he does in the games. In a way, I feel like this is a director nodding at, this is the part of the game when you're bad at the game. But as the, as it goes on, you get better at the game. After we see uh, Luigi get caught, though, we do cut back to Bowser, and we get probably the best arc. I'd say Bowser's probably the strongest character in this movie because he just wants pussy the whole time, which I think is pretty funny. He's sitting there, and uh, his whole goal is that he stole the star to impress Peach, and that's kind of fun. I like the incel vibes of that. I think that's cool. And all of his, all the little Koopa guys are like, well, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, I stole the star to impress Peach. I'm like, dude, what? Well, what if she says no? What if she declares? Mind your advances. Surely you're not gonna <laughs> her. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna put that in. And basically, basically, <laughs> basically, Bowser says like, "Oh, if Peach declines my advances," <laughs> is how I read it. If Peach doesn't marry me, I'm gonna destroy the fucking universe. And everyone's like, "Yay, we're evil! Let's do it!" Oh, and then there's a funny scene where he's nervous that Mario's gonna impede on getting his pussy with Peach. He's like, "Oh, it is Peach attracted to Mario?" His little goons are like, "No, sir, you're the you're the true cream of the crop." And we found this guy, and they have a funny mustache pulling part of it. 
interrogating Luigi. Mario goes up to Peach's castle next, breaks in, he's getting chased by all these silly toads with their armor on. They look silly. They don't look threatening at all, do they, Nick? They do, uh, The princess is in another castle joke. Oh, is that from the games? The toad that's with him makes a stir fry, and then Mario's able to just, like, walk past him. In the game, are they just, like, historically dumbfounded by, like, food or something? Get in there, Mario. I'm making them grub. I'm making them snackies. They go in, walk in. You find that there's a council meeting. The other toads are saying, and it's cool because the joke is, is that the guy sounds really serious. He's a toad, but he sounds like, he sounds like this. Princess Peach, Bowser's coming. We have to figure out a plan. And Peach, our sexy queen. Bowser is coming. Basically, Peach is like, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to try to get help from the Kong community to gather an army. I'm going to get help from the Kong kingdom and get an army together. And from there, we'll be able to stop Bowser and his tirade. And it's like, oh, it's like a big, like, you know, uh, the end of the world is near. Uh. And then Mario shows up. They have a weird, awkward first interaction. Mario's dick gets hard because of how pretty Peach is. And then he says, oh, I need help saving my brother. So then they spend like days training Mario on a platformer thing. And she's like, if you can complete this, then you can come with me. And it's like, you just wasted days training an Italian man how to like jump up and eat mushrooms. And remember when I said that Mario doesn't like mushrooms and his spaghetti? Well, whenever she gives him the power up, he has to eat a mushroom and he does not like it. He throws up and he, you feel bad for the guy, but you're like, oh, I, they didn't say, they didn't say this in the games. They never said they didn't like mushrooms does the whole training montage thing. They do the I Need a Hero song. Well, every time there's a pop song in the movie, it feels like, oh, we had audio here, but we lost it. And we're Nintendo, so we just bought these songs. We legally own these songs now. Not the rights, we own them outright. The discography, we own that. Mario's training and he's about to beat it, but he doesn't. And he's like, oh, damn it, I failed again. Another huge blowback for Mario, who's this entire time really dealt with the ins and outs of being a disappointment in literally everyone's eyes. He feels like a total fucking failure. Guess what, Mario? Same. Which I thought was weird, though, because Peach, like I said, she's already taken time to not save her kingdom to train this Italian 48-year-old man. And then she sits there, and then he doesn't even complete the, the track. And she's like, it's okay, you almost got it. We'll just go. Well, why did you? we even put that in the movie, then? Wouldn't it have been funny if she was like, I don't have fucking time for you, dude. Aren't you? You're, you're a five-foot-three Italian. Also, everybody shits on Mario for being so small. Like, <laughs> when Peach and Mario first meet each other, Peach just demasculates the shit out of Mario. She's like, wow, you're very tiny. You're a little tiny guy, huh? But you got a tiny little dick, you short little fuck. She like grabs his big fucking Italian nose. Are you even human, you freak? God, your, your knuckles are so hairy. That's weird. Why do you have the full DVD box set of The Sopranos on you? I don't know. James Gandolfini is a funny. But yeah, they just, it's just kind of like, oh, well, you didn't beat it, but you know what? You showed courage and I think we're ready to go. And it's like, no, he didn't complete the test. Well, I guess I should say right here too, that this is halfway through the movie. I I was surprised by how little actually happens in this movie. Visually, it's beautiful. Like all the rendering and stuff is crazy. Then we cut to another montage with Bowser and he's talking about how he wants Peach's pussy again and he's singing songs and we get more funny Jack Black incel stuff. But then we cut back to Peach and Mario and they're already at the Kong Kingdom and the whole thing is that they're there to get the army. It's funny because there's an 80s inspired monkey who has a white business suit on. It's like the most played out trope ever. They get in his car and then and it's just another montage with another song, Take On Me, aha. Uh -huh. And it's just them driving around the Donkey Kong Kingdom, blowing up stuff, or they kill a guy. There's a, there's a guy who actually dies in the scene. The monkey guy throws a banana on the ground and it causes a wreck. And the guy just like, oh my God, no! And he like actually freaks out and he fucking like pile, like explodes into a building. He's dead. I thought that was like graphic. I, that was the, the only time I audibly laughed really hard out loud. I think everybody else is very confused because I was the only person that, uh, that laughed at that scene. Saying. They get there. Fred Armisen is uh, Cranky Kong, which is Donkey Kong's dad. And he's being a real fucking dickhead about uh, not giving the army to uh, Peach. So he says, well, if you beat my son, they do like a very weird, like old Jewish man's voice for Cranky Kong. I was like this. I, I'm not Jewish or anything, but I feel bad for Jewish people right now. If you want my army, you're going to have to beat my son in a fight. And Mario, because he has so much courage and he's so brave. He says, fine, I'll do it. And we're introduced to Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. Yeah. It's probably one of the worst 
performances of like a voice actor I've ever heard in my life, which I had this thought this morning when I woke up. I awoke with clarity in my mind and I thought to myself, I feel like Seth Rogen came in for 35 minutes. He laughed into a microphone. That's all he did is he just laughed. He just did his <laughs> and then they just used chat GPT to do all the rest of his lines. It sounded that fucking robotic. God, Seth Rogen's voice just does not fit Donkey Kong. I'm trying to think about what I would even want out of Donkey Kong. Maybe like a deeper kind of voice or like the way that they portrayed him, it should have been like maybe like a bro-y kind of voice or something. More of the story though is, oh man, does Mario get his ass kicked? Bam, boom, bing. But then he eats a silly little cat plant and he turns into a cat and he beats Donkey Kong. It's uh, visually, once again, it's all pretty cool. But from there, they publicly humiliate Donkey Kong after this, and Donkey Kong takes out a banana. It holds it basically where his cock's at, and then a guy basically like peels it, and I think that it's like a it's like a metaphor for castrating him. They peel it and they throw that away, and I thought that was very. It was pretty odd. But then the people in front of us, the four guys who all ordered Moscow mules, were just laughing their asses <laughs> off. And I was like, this is literal castration that's happening in front of us. But, okay. So they beat Donkey Kong, right? We're over halfway through this movie. And nothing has actually happened. The only thing that they have to do to defend Bowser is just go to the Kong Kingdom. So then the Jewish old Donkey Kong grandpa or dad is like, Well, I guess I'll give you my army, but we're gonna have to get carts. And then we get another music model. Montage. ACDC's Thunderstruck. Wow. And remember Mario Kart? Remember Mario Kart? Remember that game? We get Mario and he gets, makes his own. And it's really silly because Toad makes a big one. He's a tiny guy, but he makes such a big vehicle. And they're they're driving through and they're all like, hell yeah, this is awesome. They go on Rainbow Road. Remember that map in the game? Remember it? It's awesome. It's in the movie. Bowser shows up because he's pissed off because he thinks that Mario's been finger fucking peach this whole time. So he says, fuck you, Mario. I'm going to literally kill you. And they fucked up the rainbow road. Everybody gets fucked up. The monkeys get taken. Mario and Donkey Kong fucking die. They fall into the ocean. They're dead. Peach and the toad guy, basically, she's just like using him as a vibrator, riding home. And she's like, I gotta go back to my kingdom and say and, and warn everybody. But luckily we cut back to Mario and, uh, Donkey Kong and they're in the ocean and Mario saves Donkey Kong from drowning but uh oh they get eaten by a giant fish they're dead again they're dead. They're not coming back. The movie's rated R. You see Mario's fucking stomach rip open. His intestines fall out into the water. It's awesome. Peach basically goes back to her kingdom and she's just like, run, Bowser's coming. Bowser's coming. Run. And you'd think that there's some kind of time, but no, Bowser's just there. And he's like, hey, I'm going to kill your toad friend here who you've known for seven hours or you have to marry me. And she's like, well, I guess I'll suck your cock forever because I don't want this one toad to be killed. Would you just let the toad die? Well, you're saying all the toads. Yeah, he's gonna kill sure, yeah. and he was like, I'm going to nuke all of your... Okay, so she, fine guys, Jesus. She violently decides to marry Bowser to save her people, the toad people that helped raise her. Also, we got some backstory on Peach. I forgot to mention that she, as a child, just shows up through a pipe and the toads raise her. But it's like, okay, so there's probably some random woman in Brooklyn who is just like, my, my, my daughter was kidnapped and probably fucking murdered years ago. But now we're preparing for a royal wedding and Bowser's sitting there in his fancy little white suit and he is getting ready to marry Peach. But luckily we cut back to Mario and Donkey Kong. Psych, they're not dead. They're still alive inside the stomach and they have maybe 70 seconds of them reflecting on the mistakes they've made so far in the movie. But it's okay because they have a rocket ship and they fly it out of the fish. That's that's how it's literally, that's how it's done. And they fly this rocket ship all the way back to Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> All the way back to Mushroom Kingdom. It's uh, pretty funny. Peach has a badass boss girl moment where she kicks the shit out of Bowser and everybody. And luckily, Donkey Kong and Mario show up and they power up and we get another montage. Behemoth's uh, Blow Your Trumpets, Gabriel. That's the song that plays. Bowser, as his gift to Peach, is that everybody that he's conquered so far, including Luigi, the silly penguins, and uh, the monkeys, he's gonna kill them in the lake of lava as a sacrificial ritual to her. So it's it's, it's causing even more like, oh God, I hope that they can stop this from happening. And Mario and Donkey Kong fight their way up to the tower and they're able to stop the people from melting to death. It's pretty funny because it's like a literal, uh, like Bowser's gonna drop a literal A-bomb on the Mushroom Kingdom. I thought that was kind of funny. But Mario, he's wearing that one suit, like the raccoon suit that he's able to fly with. He's wearing that the whole time. And then he like hits the eye of the giant A-bomb bullet bill and it pisses off the bullet bill and the bullet bill chases him around 
around, but then Mario tricks the bullet into going into one of the green tubes, which it kind of makes it seem like it's going to New York. And it, there's just like a bunch of like very obvious 9-11 jokes you can make with this movie. And it explodes. The bomb explodes in the pipe and that merges the worlds together. Maybe everything gets sucked into the pipe or whatever. But anyways, they all end up in Brooklyn, right in Mario's neighborhood. Um, Spike from before, remember that handsome guy? He's back, but he is scared because Bowser's here now. And Bowser just beats the shit out of Mario. And Mario, you know, this whole time he's been unrelenting. He's been on top of the world, but now he's defeated. Oh, Bowser's too much. But luckily through the power of friendship, Bowser's beaten back and Mario is given the star from earlier and him and Luigi, they dive and they get a star. Basically, God damn, I'm so bored. They grab the star, they do a big fighting montage. They only do this in New York so that their family can see them, Spike can see them, and then they basically get to save Brooklyn. And then the little things from before, people now respect them. They once hated these sexual brothers who fucked each other, but now people are like, yeah, it's still kind of gross that they fuck each other and jack each other off with their hands. But at least they saved Brooklyn. So they beat up Bowser and they shrink him and they put him in a jar. They basically put him in a cum jar and they fill it up with cum. And then after this scene, there's a newspaper article where no one actually cares that there's a giant eight foot tall talking gorilla that's wearing a tie and that there was a giant flying volcano with a giant 12 foot tall turtle that can breathe fire. It just says local hero saved Brooklyn. And then it, you, sh you see that Mario and Luigi are living in the Mushroom Kingdom and they dive into a pipe and that's the end of the movie. They do put Bowser into the cum jar. They come in it and they say, so long, gay Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> the very coveted trademark line. So long, gay Bowser. It was very, very silly. You know, all in all, like, I that was a very quick re, you know, recap of the movie. Actually, I mean, fuck. I mean, I literally probably just did beat for beat, the ex like, the movie. I mean, I, I sped through some parts, but it's weird. Watching this movie right after, and I'm, dude, I, listen, I'm a 47-year-old man. So, like, I'm not one of those guys where I'm like, I mean, I, I saw Puss in Boots and Puss in Boots was better. But that's... Yeah. <laughs> Can you be critical of a children's man? This is a child. If I was a child, I would have been clapping and slapping my belly and, you know, laughing and giggling. And look at the visuals because the visuals are very impressive. I thought it was going to be some big, bright fucking monstrosity. The designs and stuff are great. Some of the, the rendering on the textures of like skin and like claw, it's very impressive. Like visually, it's incredibly impressive. A nice visual appetite. In terms of like an actual story, though, and like, you know, having fun jokes for the whole family. Having something memorable, it's very odd that they spent that much money on the movie and they just like the, the story it, it seems like it was done in a day. Because you watch something and I you know, like I said, I hate to do this, but Puss in Boots was something where I feel like you could be any age and it has a little something for everybody. It's funny in that way. It's not overly gratuitous anyway, but it's like not like super innocent and stupid. This movie just felt like it's like only meant for four-year-olds. Which if that's the case, that's fine, but I will never watch this movie again. I just won't. The movie is full of these like really awkwardly placed pop songs. Pop songs from like 40 years ago. It was just odd. So there's tons of montages, which also made it like very apparent that there wasn't hardly any dialogue in the movie. Like people say things, but there's really like not a lot of like actual acting and like pivotal moments of Mario saying like a, like having something meaningful to say. It's all just like very, it feels like they wrote a script after the movie was already done. And they kind of were just like, can you just say these lines really quick? So so all the dialogue felt unimportant. Like everything was just rushed. It feels weird that to protect your kingdom, the only thing that you had to do was go to a monkey area and try to ask monkeys for help. There was no buildup of like having to have these trials and tribulations that build us up towards like these characters and like also show the world that like we are in. It's just like, we're gonna go see the monkeys. Okay, that, that worked. Let's ride our Mario Karts because that's another game. It could have worked, but there's like a montage where you see Mario and Peach walking from different worlds to get to the Donkey Kong thing. And you see some Yoshis in the background running around. Could there not have been anything along that way that would have at least even just made it more difficult to get to the Donkey Kong place, that this journey feels sought after, that whenever we get to the Donkey Kong area that you feel like, fuck, they made it. And we don't get that. You think about all the great kids movies, right? Shrek. Puss in Boots 2, because I just saw that and I thought it was awesome. Fucking Mulan, Lion King. Fucking any Ghibli film that 
anime art girls flick their clits to. You need to have a solid baseline story that you can fit jokes into, that you can have some kind of just just an interesting story. And this this the movie to me gets such a low rating because there's no fucking acting. The script is basically non-existent. Every time that they just wanted to show off stuff instead of thinking of something interesting to do with their characters or with you know hundreds of millions of dollars as your budget, you basically just bought the rights to incredibly like already memeable pop songs that have already been used a billion times over and that's how you showed b-roll or your your characters doing shit seth rogan was it's a atrocity that he has a career still i don't I, I, anything he touches now is just cancer literal <laughs> cancer and uh it's just bad movie i think if i had a child and he was like I can't say that. It would be a fine movie to show a child. The only redeeming part of this movie is there's one shot, and I stand, whoever did this shot over there at uh, Illumination or Nintendo is on the Rainbow Road. We see Peach pull forward, and you see her fucking giant ass hanging on this seat, and she is groping that son of a bitch. You basically see the outline of her oh. and her giant ass, and she's looking back at Mario because she knows he's looking, and Mario's literally like this. What? If there would have been more of that, if there would have been more of like, because I think that also helped The Incredibles be so memorable, was Mrs. Incredibles big fucking ass. You know, I know that there's Princess Peach Rule 34 out there, but still, I, I wanted more nods to it. We had nods to everything else in the film. We only had one nod to the Rule 34, which has carried the franchise. Let's be honest. So yeah, I don't know. If it was me, if I, if I were you, just for the visuals alone, I would go see it up on the big screen. But if you wait to see this at your house, you're going to be very disappointed. There it is. I hope you guys are eating mushrooms today and I hope you get big or you get a little flamethrower i don't fucking know i'm done also justice for chris pratt sure he's a religious freak he's a weirdo <laughs> a religious freak just a christian you're a monster I, everybody gave him a lot of shit people need to give seth rogan shit for how terrible i mean just like no effort at all chris pratt honestly probably like one of the best performances in the movie if i had to say granted he's mario he has the most lines but still